In this world, there's no one exactly like you. Everyone is unique and one of a kind. But while that is technically true, there are some people out there that take uniqueness to a whole other level. From a one-man blue man group to a guy with very real cybernetic enhancements, let me introduce you to some folks that are truly one in a million. Javier Botet. Looking different to most other people isn't always pleasant, but for some, standing out in the crowd is their moneymaker. At age 5, Javier Botet was diagnosed with Marfan syndrome, a genetic disorder that affects the connective tissue in the body and causes the body's longer bones to grow too much. As a result, in adulthood, Javier stands at a towering 6 foot 7 inches tall but weighs just 123 pounds. People with Marfan syndrome are often tall and thin, with long arms, legs, fingers and toes, and often suffer from scoliosis, a medical condition in which a person's spine develops a sideways curve. Thankfully, Javier has avoided the majorly negative complications of the syndrome and doesn't let his condition hold him back from achieving his dreams. Javier's unique look, paired with a keen interest in the performing arts, led him to pursue a career in acting. Because of Javier's ability to perform such distinctive body movements, he's found his niche as a creature actor. While many actors resent typecasting, Javier fully embraces it and puts his flexible limbs to good use in many movie roles. Javier has appeared in many horror hits, including Mama, The Conjuring 2, and It Chapter 2 as well as starring as the one and only Slender Man in the 2018 movie about the terrifying urban legend. While Marfan syndrome affects around 1 in 5,000 people, what makes Javier one in a million is the way he's utilized it to his advantage. And with over 20 iconic creature performances so far, I can't wait to see what he does next. Paul Carrison The next time you're feeling a little blue, Cast your thoughts to Paul Carrison. In his younger years, Paul was fair-skinned with red hair, but later developed a bad case of eczema. In his search for a cure to alleviate the painful cracking of his dry skin, he stumbled across a magazine advert showing a shriveled old daisy brought back to life by a powerful liquid. That liquid was colloidal silver, which consists of tiny silver particles suspended in a liquid base and was being peddled as a cure-all for skin conditions. With hopes of becoming as fresh as a daisy himself, Paul set about making his own colloidal silver at home. Soon, he was drinking a 10-ounce glass of the stuff each day, hoping to improve his general health as well as treat his dermatitis. However, after a few years of this regimen, Paul developed a case of what doctors call argyria. In other words, he turned completely blue, this blue-gray discoloration of the skin and eyes is caused by an excessive buildup of silver ions, like those found in colloidal silver. The condition is extremely rare but completely irreversible, and Paul was, ironically, left with skin that drew way more attention than his eczema ever would have. But despite becoming more reclusive to avoid the stairs, Paul never stopped taking his colloidal silver potion. He passed away on September 23, 2013, at the age of 62, after suffering a stroke that was completely unrelated to his Argyria. In fact, Argyria isn't considered to be all that dangerous at all, save for the damage to your ego having to explain to everyone you meet. I'm afraid I just blew myself. <laughs> Neil Harbison Many people out there believe that, eventually, robots will take over the world. While that idea may seem like science fiction, it may surprise you to hear that there are actually cyborgs among us already. This is Neil Harbison, who was born in Mataro, Spain, and was quickly diagnosed with acromatopsia, or complete colorblindness. This 1 in 30,000 condition means Neil can only see the world in shades of black, white, and gray. For 20 years, Neil's life was in grayscale, until he acquired that distinctive piece of headgear in 2004. It isn't just a high fashion hat, it's actually an antenna that's permanently attached to Neil's head. 
This cyborg antenna is a sensory system created to extend Neil's perception of color. It's actually implanted into his skull, attached to his occipital bone, and uses tech to allow Neil to hear colors. The antenna features a camera that translates the different colors it detects into vibrations of different frequency, transmitting those vibrations inside Neil's head through the bones in his skull, which are felt and detected in the inner ear. He uses his unique, cybernetically enhanced perception of the world to inform his approach to art, allowing him to paint using colors he can't actually differentiate between with his eyes alone. Far from a disability, Neil considers his worldview as a gift, and believes that recent technological advances will mean there will be more human cyborgs in the near future. Steph Sanjati I'm sure most of us have looked in the mirror and wanted to change a few things that make us unique. Thankfully though, there are plenty of role models out there that can show us what it really means to have confidence in what makes you different. This is Steph Sanjati, and you've probably noticed that she has a very distinctive appearance. Sporting a streak of naturally white hair and piercing wide-set blue eyes, Steph's unique appearance is a result of a genetic condition that causes facial bone mutations, hearing loss, and unusual hair and eye pigmentation. This collection of symptoms is what's known as Wardenburg Syndrome, and in 2015, Steph shared a YouTube video explaining her experiences with the syndrome that's now garnered almost 10 million views. While Wardenburger Syndrome affects an estimated 1 in 40,000 people, and those piercing blue eyes and pale patch of hair may not be completely unique to Steph, Wardenburg Syndrome isn't the only thing that makes her unique. Steph is also transgender, and in December 2016, underwent facial feminization surgery to bring her face closer in appearance to typically female facial features. While Steph has been able to move forward identifying as female, she didn't allow her surgeon to alter any of her Wardenburg Syndrome features. To her, those features are an essential part of what makes her who she is. And we can certainly learn a thing or two from Steph about coming to value those unusual things that make us individuals. Zhang Roy Fang In 2009, a 100-year-old woman named Zhang Roy Fang from China's Henan province noticed something strange, hard, and brown growing from the left side of her forehead. Once 2010 rolled around, her forehead friend had grown to two inches long, and by her 102nd birthday, it was almost four inches long. Stranger still, before long it became apparent that Zhang was growing not just one, but two of these horn-like appendages on either side of her forehead. Despite resembling what her family referred to as devil horns, these growths are actually skin tumors, known as cutaneous horns. These abnormal protrusions from the skin are formed from keratin, the same substance that makes up fingernails. While the exact cause of cutaneous horns is unknown, exposure to radiation from sunlight is theorized to be a driving force, and I suppose after a century on Earth, Zhang's forehead has seen a lot of sunlight. Despite doctors and family members urging Zhang to get her horns removed, she reportedly refused because she's never had so many well-wishers and visitors to her home. Since 2011, there have been no public updates on Zhang and her horns, but here's hoping they continue to grow to this day, as a kind of crown to celebrate her seriously impressive age. Nyakim Gatwech The fashion industry has historically been pretty harsh and many models buckle under the pressure to look certain, specific ways. Thankfully though, as time goes by, the focus on a single type of beauty and appearance is becoming less and less, with unique, striking appearances instead taking center stage. One individual taking the fashion world by storm with her distinctive looks, affectionately known as Queen of the Dark, is Nyakim Gatwech, an American model of South Sudanese descent. Nyakim's skin is very rich in melanin, a special pigment on the outermost layer of the skin. Melanin helps to protect the body from the sun's radiation and gives skin its color. The darker your skin, the more melanin you have. 
Having emigrated to the USA at the age of 14, Nyakim recalls being teased by other kids because of her extra dark complexion. Despite this, Nyakim believed in her unique beauty and began working as a model, and has now worked with major beauty brands alongside gathering almost a million followers on Instagram. Showing the true power of social media, Nyakim's page is flooded with positive comments about her distinctive skin tone, totally overpowering the naysayers of her younger years. Providing a role model for people whom, previously, seeing individuals with skin tones as distinctive as their own, represented in the mainstream public eye, was almost unheard of. Models like Nyakim and fellow model and friend Kodia Diop from Senegal are more than just a pretty face. Larry Gomez A lot of guys complain about not being able to grow enough facial hair, but they might count themselves lucky after meeting this next unique character. Larry Gomez from Laredo, Mexico is covered in so much hair, particularly on his face, that he's been dubbed as one of the world's hairiest men. A hair raising 98% of Larry's body, save for his palms and soles, is completely covered with thick, dark hair as a result of a rare condition called hypertrichosis. Hypertrichosis, also known as werewolf syndrome, results from a chromosome mutation, causing the production of a thick coat of hair all over the body, as seen here with Yu Zhenhuan of China, and most commonly appears in a person's early years. That said, there are various different classifications of hypertrichosis. Larry, along with some of his extended family members, were actually born covered with hair, which is an extremely rare variety of the condition, known as congenital generalized hypertrichosis. In fact, since the Middle Ages, fewer than 100 cases of congenital generalized hypertrichosis have been documented. It's estimated that around 107 billion people have ever lived on Earth. So with this in mind, Larry isn't merely one in a million. He's actually closer to one in a billion. Shyla Madison A bad hair day can get the better of most of us out there. But what if a bad hair day turned into a bad hair life? This is Shyla Madison, and that wild look isn't deliberate. Shyla was born in 2010 sporting a halo of blonde fuzz that would stick with her for life. As she grew, this tot's untamable tresses stood constantly on end and refused to be flattened, making brushing it a fruitless task. After years of battling with her unruly mane, Shyla was diagnosed with a condition known as uncombable hair syndrome at the age of seven. Yes, that's a thing. Uncombable hair syndrome is caused by a genetic mutation that prevents the production of certain hair proteins, causing hair strands to form in a misshapen manner. Characterized by dry, frizzy hair that is impossible to comb flat, the condition is so rare there are only around 100 people worldwide known to possess it. That makes Shyla one in 790 million. Some experts speculate that Albert Einstein had uncombable hair syndrome, and Shyla and her family have accepted her similar look as an in-house joke. It certainly looks like Shyla has the smarts to not care about being different, and embraces her unique look. Ramesh Darji Born in the small village of Bimgita in Nepal, Ramesh Darji suffers from a rare and debilitating condition known as ichthyosis. This condition, triggered by a defective gene, causes dead skin cells to accumulate on Ramesh's skin surface instead of dropping off of his body. This results in hard, flaky scales and extremely limited mobility for young Ramesh. While there are more than 20 types of ichthyosis, Ramesh has the rarest and most severe kind, known as harlequin ichthyosis which is extremely painful and, sadly, incurable. Ramesh's skin grows a shocking 10 times faster than it should, which led to his skin becoming solid, almost like stone, requiring his family to constantly apply moisturizing ointments to ease his symptoms. Just by chance, a reporter from the Kathmandu Post happened to walk past Ramesh outside his home in 2016. 
and after Ramesh's heartbreaking story subsequently went viral online, it caught the attention of people around the world, who were able to offer help. In the aftermath, he was offered free treatment at the Kathmandu Medical College, where, even if his disease cannot be cured, he can at least receive the best relief care available. Elisane Silva Being tall is often a requirement of modeling, but Brazilian model Elisane Silva is on another level, literally. By age 10, Elisane was already 5'9", taller than both her 5'4 mother and 5'7 father, meaning at only a decade old she was already the tallest member of the family. By this time, she started to experience feelings of intense pain in her bones, as well as a built-up pressure in her head, both of which turned out to be connected to the excessive rate at which she was growing. It turned out that Elisane had a benign tumor on her pituitary gland that had caused an overproduction in growth hormones, and it was only when she had the tumor surgically removed that her rapid growth finally stopped. By this time, Elisane was 18, and she was standing at 6 feet 9 inches, claiming the title of Brazil's tallest woman. Excessive growth, like that experienced by Elisane, is known as gigantism, which is an exceptionally rare condition with just around 100 reported cases to date. While Elisane's height is certainly staggering, and alongside her figure and flawless features has helped her begin a modeling career, she's not quite the tallest woman in the world. That title is held by Turkey's Rumeza Gelgi, who stands 7 feet 0.7 inches tall. One thing that makes Elisane unique, however, is her husband. Love comes in all shapes and sizes, and 5'4 France and Aldo wasn't at all afraid to reach for the stars, with the couple getting married in 2015. The two had a son together in 2018, and baby number two is also on the way, although the jury's still out on whose height these kids will inherit. David Vetter a few years ago, the word quarantine seemed exclusive to movies and TV shows. Things are very different now, but compared to the life of David Vetter, our lockdown woes seem like a walk in the park. On September 21, 1971, David Vetter was born in Texas with a hereditary disease that made him abnormally susceptible to infections. Known as severe combined immunodeficiency, this rare genetic disorder affects the production of antibodies, which healthy bodies use to fight off infections. David's antibodies were almost completely defective, meaning as soon as he was born, he had to be isolated in a completely germ-free environment at the Texas Children's Hospital, which became his home for most of his life. And while you might consider living in a bubble just a figure of speech, this way of living became necessary for David's survival. Everything that entered David's bubble had to be thoroughly sterilized, including water, air, food, diapers, and clothes. To do this, items had to be placed in a chamber filled with a special sterilizing gas called ethylene oxide and heated to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Not only that, but David could only be touched using special plastic gloves that were attached to a wall of the chamber. Despite all of this, David's parents and doctors were determined to provide him with as normal a life as was possible. They installed a playroom and TV in his bubble, and also made sure he was provided with a formal education. When David was four years old, he figured out he was able to poke holes in his bubble using a butterfly syringe that had been left inside the chamber by mistake. After discovering this, to their horror, doctors explained to David what germs were, and how they affected him differently than they affected other people. While that close call had no serious outcome, David was suddenly aware of the dangers of the outside world. Regardless, as he grew a little older, he grew ever keener to explore the outside world. Hoping to give the poor kid a fleeting chance to experience normal life, the hospital doctors reached out to engineers for help, and wound up receiving assistance from the last place you might expect, NASA. That's right, a group of NASA researchers used their experience with spacesuits to create a special suit that would allow David to finally walk around in the outside world. The suit took three years and $50,000 to make, 
and was completed in 1977, before David's sixth birthday. The suit itself had an eight-foot-long tube tethered between David's isolation bubble and a transparent sphere worn over his head, which functioned as a biological isolation system. Unfortunately, though, the suit proved very uncomfortable for David, and it rarely saw much use. By the time David was 12 years old, $1.3 million had been spent on his care. But despite all that money, as we've seen already, being one in a million doesn't always mean a happy life, nor a happy ending. David sadly died aged 12 on February 2, 1984, after a bone marrow transplant, which would likely have cured him, turned out to be harboring an undetected virus, which proved fatal to David's immune system. David certainly left quite the legacy behind though, and a nearby elementary school was named after him. With a view that every child could learn something about perseverance and finding joy in even the most desperate circumstances from the story of this one in a million child. Milagros Seron Born in Juan Cayo, Peru on April 27, 2004, Milagros Seron was undoubtedly one of the most unique humans you'll ever see. Although most of Milagros's internal organs, including her heart and lungs, were in perfect condition, she was born with some significant internal defects, collectively known as Cyrenomelia, or mermaid syndrome. On the inside, her digestive and urinary tracts shared a single tube, while on the outside, her legs were fused together from abdomen to heel, with her feet splayed out in a V-shape, looking just like a mermaid's tail hence the name of the syndrome. Mermaid syndrome occurs in around 1 in 70,000 births, but sadly, most infants don't make it past their first 48 hours of life. Fittingly though, the first name Milagros means miracles in Spanish, and the girl was only one of three reported cases of surviving Cyrenomelia past infancy. Dr. Luis Rubio treated Milagros from when she was just a couple of days old, and along with a team of surgeons, was able to separate her conjoined legs when she was two years old. By the time she reached kindergarten, Milagros was miraculously walking by herself, took ballet lessons, and ran around the playground with her classmates. Despite beating the odds to survive and even walk, Milagros sadly passed away at the age of 15 from a kidney problem related to her condition. Still affectionately known as the Little Mermaid, it's safe to say that Milagros's cheerful demeanor in spite of her heartbreaking story can teach us all something about what really matters in life. Rama Haruna It's easy to forget sometimes just how amazing the human body is, and we often take for granted our ability to do our daily tasks. But Rama Haruna is a testament to the human body's ability to exist, even in a form that seems impossible. Born in Kano in northern Nigeria, Rama appeared to be a healthy baby, but as she got older, it became apparent that she wasn't like other children. At the age of six months, both Rama's legs and one of her arms inexplicably stopped growing, while her head, neck, and torso continued as usual. This mystery condition baffled doctors and left Rama unable to do basic tasks such as walking, crawling, or even holding most items. Due to the immobility her condition caused her, Rama was left living her life inside of a bucket that family and friends used to carry her around. It was eventually discovered that Rama was suffering from a severe case of phocomelia, a condition that causes malformations of body, face, arms, and legs, thought to be due to errors in the way chromosomes replicate the sufferer's body. According to research, phocomelia occurs in just 4.2 per 100,000 births, but few suffering as severely as Rama have survived past infancy, meaning her life, though limited to a bucket, was somewhat miraculous. Shortly after a photograph of Rama and her bucket went viral online in 2016, an anonymous donor provided her with a wheelchair to make getting around easier for her and her family. Despite her disability, Rama was always in high spirits and had dreams of opening her own grocery store. Sadly though, she passed away on Christmas Day in 2019, at the age of 19, from complications surrounding her condition. 
But if a girl who had to spend her life in a bucket can smile through it all, instead of being sad at her passing, we can use her story to give ourselves a little strength too. Virsevia Boren Goncharova Taking a look at this picture of Virsevia Boren Goncharova from Florida, USA, you might assume she's just like any other girl. But Virsevia was actually born with a condition that caused her ribcage and abdominal muscles to form irregularly in the womb. This resulted in her heart forming outside of her ribcage, leaving it exposed below only a layer of skin. And you can even see it beating. Pentalogy of Cantrell, also known as thoracoabdominal syndrome, is an extremely rare condition that affects around five newborns out of a million births. Thanks to the power of evolution, the regular human ribcage forms a protective enclosure around some of our most vital organs, the heart and lungs. Because of her condition, Virsavia's heart is completely unprotected aside from the skin that covers her chest. While her condition does not cause Virsavia any pain in day-to-day -day life, she does have to be extremely careful, as a simple bump or fall could prove fatal. Still. Like many of the people we've seen today, Virsavia is a perfect reminder that there are many, many ways to exist as a human being. And the more we come to understand that, the kinder and more empathetic we can all be. And if you ask me, I'd say that's a pretty good thing. Which of these truly amazing individuals inspired you the most? Do you have any features that make you unique? Let me know down in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.